Discovery and ISS, this is Houston. Are you ready for the public event? Houston, we are ready. MSNBC, this is Houston. Please call Discovery and ISS for a voice check. Uh, our wage, um, I, I cannot describe that the, the, I think my most disappointing feeling is that the university is... Discovery ISS, this is MSNBC. How do you hear me? We've got you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. And the university has responded to... Thanks so much for having us. We are going to be coming to you in about two minutes. If I could get a quick 10 count from you, please, for Tesla Audio. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good to go here. In about a minute and a half, you'll be speaking with Richard. And so there was, uh, you know, there, there was a little... Copy. Thirty seconds away here. Space Center play U2 City of Blinding Light for the shuttle crew after taking another successful spacewalk and doing some maintenance this morning. The astronauts are getting the afternoon off as they head into the final days of Discovery's final mission ever. Well, live from space, let's bring in Discovery pilot Colonel Eric Bowe and mission specialist Dr. Mike Barrett and Nicole Stott. Very good day to all of you. First of all, you know, as, when we look at these pictures, it's the hair. And, and, you know, when we look at Nicole, how do you guys handle that? What are the jokes between you guys, between astronauts, when you have to deal with what's going on up there? <laughs> You really want to know? Um, <laughs> I try to keep mine confined a little bit. It's um, it, it it's it's fun to, uh, to hang out and uh, let it flop around a little bit, but uh, it'll it'll get you into trouble too. There's a lot of Velcro up here that you can get caught on and you get stopped real quick and that kind of thing. Um, but it, overall, it's it's um, it's part of the fun of being here, and I, I I like to at least have a ponytail because then you can see you know we're in space and it's floating around. It's always the simple things. And for our viewers, there's about a three to five second delay here because we are talking to space or up in space. Uh, you know, Mike, uh, I want to ask you this one. You know, Discovery, uh, it's been up there very many times. And, and uh, when we take a look at the miles that Discovery has been on after the 5,600 trips it's been around the Earth, are, are there more uh, leaks, shall we say, in the sunroof? Are there tears in the upholstery? Is it creaking a little bit more? 
You know, it's a great question, but uh, inherent in flying in space is that the hardware has to work pretty well perfectly. Peter, and, and I think Peter I can say, Peter, I think I can uh, safely say that uh, Discovery's at the top of her game. I mean, she's a very clean vehicle, and she's very well cared for and uh, viciously defended by the ground crew that uh, that services her. And she is just in pristine shape. So no, it's it's a wonderful vehicle to fly on. All right, Eric, let's go to you. Um, of the 180 people that have flown on Discovery, how does it feel for you to pilot the last group on this Moonraker? Well, obviously, uh, I'm very honored to have the opportunity to fly on board Discovery. She's a great machine, as Mike just said incredible vehicle and to me she looks brand new i mean as mike was saying the the team that maintains her at kennedy space center and all the other people around the united states that help uh, maintain her perfect vehicle really looking forward to the landing at the after we finish our days up here on orbit and it'll be a bittersweet moment when we put her on deck at kennedy space center all right, thank you all for stopping by here on MSNBC there from the International Space Station and from the shuttle Discovery, Colonel Eric Bowen, Mission Specialist Dr. Mike Barrett and Nicole Stott. Thank you all three very much, and uh, Godspeed to you. It's the Discovery ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the MSNBC portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from WXIA TV. Now? Discovery ISS, this is WXIA-TV. How do you hear me? We have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Awesome. We are so excited. Thank you so much. Glad to have you here. Eric Ball, can you say hello to all your friends, family here in the Atlanta area? Hello to everyone out in Atlanta. I have a strong fondness for the Atlanta area and uh, look forward to coming back and visiting after the flight to talk to everyone there. Well, Colonel Bo, tell us now, Debbie Huffman from the Firm Bank Science Center tells us you always wanted to be an astronaut. Talk a little bit about this growing up in the Atlanta area. Well, Atlanta really prepared me to uh, do what I'm doing now. There was a program at the uh, Fernbank Science Center, and that's where I met Debbie Huffman. I was doing it in a summer program, and she uh, got me interested. They had some great educational science programs there, and I've maintained contact with her over these years. And so it's a great uh, place to grow up and be ready. And like you said, I was ready. I've been thinking about being an astronaut all my life, and I was lucky enough to get the chance to do it. Awesome. Henderson uh, Henderson High School, Georgia Tech. You went on to be a fighter pilot first. Talk a little bit about that experience. Well, I'm an aviation nut. I really enjoy uh, being a fighter pilot. And as in the Air Force, I, was, I flew the uh, F-4 and the F-15C. And a great experience. Uh, being on the shuttle is a lot like being in a fighter. You're just a little higher up in the atmosphere. And talk a little bit about what's going on there now for you. Got to be pretty exciting. Uh, really also kind of melancholy, too, because this is the last flight for you guys uh, there aboard Discovery. Talk about that. Well, we're all honored and privileged to get the opportunity to fly on board Discovery and come back up to the space station. We just put on the uh, last U.S. module, pressurized module, with the uh, permanent uh, mo uh, PMM. We ended up, uh, it's a great opportunity to uh, see the planet. We are, obviously, it's a bittersweet moment when we uh, return to Discovery home, but she's a great flying machine, and we leave a, a great legacy with the uh, space shuttle, with Discovery being the first one to be retired. 
amazing. And folks are talking already about uh, just what's going to go on. A lot of pilots probably won't be used. Uh, in the space program anymore. So talk a little bit about how you feel since you're so prepared for this and you might not uh, get that opportunity to pilot again. Well, hopefully if I'm lucky enough, I'll get the chance to pilot some other vehicle in the future. The uh, it, it feels uh, they are still going to be taking uh, pilots into the astronaut program, uh, especially with the uh, test pilot experience, most of the pilots in the and the NASA astronaut corps have test pilot experience, and, and that helps with a lot of the uh, specialty work of checking out new vehicles. And these vehicles don't fly very often, so that's a uh, good reason to uh, bring in you know, test flights the same kind of way. Every space shuttle flight we fly is a test flight, and whatever new vehicle that we have come online after this is, is going to need test flying as well. So if I'm lucky, I'll get the opportunity to do that. Uh, awesome. Now talk a little bit about, you know, so much of what you all do. People think of it as just being up in space and really not a big effect to what we have back here. But you all have created and helped to create so many products that we use every day and that folks are using here uh, right now, the GPS systems, uh, some other things. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, there's all kinds of technologies that come out of the, the space program, and, and right now that's the, what, the big purpose of the International Space Station is to continue that kind of research. It's a national uh, test facility, and we're put, we have over 150 experiments going on board the uh, space station right now. And just about anything that you can name of the small computers that everyone has now, the miniaturization all came through the, uh, a lot of that work came through the space program. Uh, there are many other things that, uh, as well, technologies that come along the way through the space program. Nicole Stott, Mike Berry, we're not going to leave you all hanging by there, too. We just, you know, don't get a chance to talk to uh, Eric much. So talk to us about your experiences there with him. What's he like as a, as a comrade up in space? <laughs> well, you know, we uh, were talking earlier on another event that uh, we have a crew of six amateur comedians, but there's two of them that kind of stand out and keeping the rest of us in stitches, and Eric is one of those. But, um, you know, he, he mentioned that he's an aviation nut, and uh, he was a fighter pilot, but a lot of us know him as an aviation instructor. And uh, we fly with him a lot, and he's he's definitely got a teacher's hand. And uh, believe me, if you can take a, a doctor like me and make me uh, fly supersonic jets uh, effectively as a flight engineer, then that really says something. And uh, overall, he's just always on top of his game and uh, just always uh, all over the flight plan that we're trying to execute and just a pleasure to fly with. Manny's going to have to pay you later for those comments. How about you, Nicole? <laughs> Well, one of the things that comes to mind, especially with this flight, is that the three of us here, as well as two other of our crew members, uh, were part of the same astronaut class. We uh, are called the Bugs, and we were selected in the year 2000. So um, when you mention comrade, it's like there's a camaraderie here, I think, that is really deep. We've spent a long time training together. And um, it's a real joy to get to fly with people like Eric that um, that we work so hard with on the ground. And uh, like, men like uh, Mike mentioned, flying with Eric both in airplanes uh, close to our Earth and on a space shuttle up here uh, a little bit further away has just been a real joy. He, um, out of nowhere, will make you just crack up. And at the same time, and I think it's, it's one of these things that um, I found really pleasant about um, some of the training that we have is that we have these true professionals, people that are seriously and just in them know the uh, technical stuff they need to know. But on the other hand, you have this personality that just makes it, you know, makes them the kind of people you want to be with, especially when you're off the planet uh, uh, circling our Earth. Oh, wonderful. We've got two more quick things. Um, Back here at home, Eric, we are doing something. It's called Rachel Challenge, but it's adding a link, getting people to do acts of kindness all over. You guys are doing something huge for everyone on the planet. Would love for you to just say, I'm Eric Bo, and I'm adding a link for us. We'd love to use that line, and we're going to get you to... Oh, can I do that? Okay, they told me can I do it. So uh, the other thing I wanted to say is you guys have a big interview coming up later today. You're going to be speaking with the Commander-in-Chief. That's right. We'll be talking to the uh, president later today, and we're really looking forward to it. 
All right. Some of the things that you can expect that he'll be talking about. I imagine he'll be talking some of the things that we've already talked about today, the science that's going on board, and, you know, the path forward to the future. We obviously have the uh, space shuttles retiring, so I imagine he'll talk about the, the path f forward that we plan on uh, occurring and probably some other current event type things. All right. Well, we are so excited that you guys are uh, having an opportunity to talk to us here. Really appreciate your time. We will be using this very well in our newscast. So thank you so much for your time, and uh, have a safe trip back home for Monday. We thank you very much, and literally look forward to coming back to the Atlanta area. Thank you very much. Discovery ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the WXIA TV portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from Fox News Radio. Discovery ISS, this is Fox News Radio. How do you hear me? We have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Thank you for joining us. This is Eben Brown from Fox News Radio in Miami. It's a pleasure to speak with you all again. And because we're on the radio, I'd ask uh, that before each of you speak, uh, each time that you please identify yourselves. Um, but for a question for all three of you, uh, how's the mission going so far? Hi, I'm uh, Mission Specialist Michael Barrett. Uh, mission is going great. Uh, we've been up here, I think we're on uh, flight day eight right now, and uh, the good news is, is that a lot of the hard stuff is behind us. We've done a lot of robotics. We've added new things, a new storage uh, module and a new cargo carrier to the International Space Station. We've done two great spacewalks, and uh, now we can kind of relax a little bit. Those all went extremely well, thanks a lot to the ground team. And uh, we can work on transferring some of the things from the shuttle to the station and uh, back the other way and helping to unpack this uh, great big new module that we just brought. So mission's going great. I am. Okay, well, uh, thank you. Uh, Bo, uh, we know that we have a few people speaking with us. Uh, um, now, I think pilot uh, Eric Bow is with us. And, and, sir, you're one of the people who gets to drive during Discovery's final trek. Uh, how's the ship holding up? Is she ready for retirement? She, is, uh, def she has a lot of miles left in her, but, you know, this is a, the time that we had talked about this uh, about five or six years ago. The plan was made to look at retiring to the, the shuttle. It's been around for 30 years. It has a great legacy, and it's about time to move on to the future of vehicles coming up in the future. But how, how is she doing? How is she performing on this mission? Is she uh, is she holding up? Is she fine? Just is she holding up? Is she fine? Yeah, I commented earlier today that she looks brand new. It looks like she this is her first flight. So it's amazingly clean. Really a testament to the the teams that we have on the ground that maintain her and and uh, train us. Everything's going uh, great. There's always some f very minor things, but that happens on every flight, and that's part of what makes space flight exciting. And we're also joined by uh, Mission Specialist Nicole Stott. Uh, you've had a previous stay on the International Space Station. You're visiting now. I believe you were last there in November of 2009. Uh, you can correct me on that if I'm wrong. How does it look now? Is, is it any different? Is it uh, bigger? Do you still recognize it? You know, what was nice coming across the hatch is that uh, just how familiar and comfortable it felt. Um, but it is definitely bigger. We have uh, another couple module at, modules that have been added, um, uh, two down on the Russian segment, and then our uh, Node 3 and Cupola, the big uh, panoramic window that we have. And I have to say, that was just you know one of those things that I think all of us were really looking forward to seeing. And it is certainly a positive addition, a really beautiful addition to the space station. And and provides us with opportunities to do robotics by looking out the window at the hardware that we're handling, as well as to uh, appreciate even more the spectacular views we have of our planet. 
And, and uh, Michael Barrett, you were last aboard the space station uh, before Nicole, I believe, and, and, and you're getting the chance to look out the cupola as well. What is it like for those of us who will likely never get the chance to, to view space and the planet from, from such a vantage point? What are the impressions? How could you best describe it? Well, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think we're all kind of wired to appreciate natural beauty, no matter who you are, where you came from, or what time in history. Everybody looks at a, a mountain or a lake or the ocean and, and just realizes how beautiful it is. We have those senses in, inherent in us. And I can tell you that up here, those senses can almost be overwhelmed. When you're looking out and you see the curvature of the Earth and this magnificent blue planet just hanging there in the blackness of space, it really does kind of take your breath away. And that uh, huge window, that cupola, gives us a view like we've just never had before. It's, it's uh, absolutely magnificent there. It also uh, really helps us, as Nicole said, when we're doing things like uh, the robotics. We're moving a great big robotic arm and a great big payload on the end of it. It, it makes it a lot uh, safer and a lot more effective to be able to see that directly. So it's a direction that we need to be going. And this question is for all three of you, and if you could all pass the mic around just so uh, we could we could hear all of your answers. Um, you know, you're getting to ride on Discovery for her last mission, and I, I know you're very much concentrating on completing the mission at hand, but surely you've had a chance for reflection. And What do you think you will tell people about flying in Discovery and the other shuttles, uh, you, you know, when you talk about this in the future? How are you going to look back at this experience of your career? Well, I think this is Nicole, and I think uh, Eric said it um, very correctly that, you know, it really is an honor and a privilege to be able to, well, to have been able to fly Discovery at any point in time. And the, and the fact that, that we're on this final flight, I think, um, you know, really stands out to us. It's, um, it's a real opportunity, I think, to celebrate the just really great things that have gone on with um, with Discovery and her fine history and uh, the part of the space shuttle program that uh, Discovery participated in, which was a big one. Um, it's done everything from, you know, deploying satellites on a, you know, on a, on a standalone flight, working as an orbiting laboratory on its own, and um, significantly contributing to the uh, flights that uh, went into building the International Space Station. And I know, I, I have to admit, you know, I think when we walk away from her on the runway um, after we land, it's there's going to be tears in my eyes, I know. I worked with her at Kennedy Space Center, and the chance to fly has just been um, a real, real privilege. As Mike Barrett, um, you know, over probably a four-century span, there's been a lot of ships of discovery, named discovery. All these were dedicated to exploration and science. And uh, these were captained by everybody from Henry Hudson to uh, George Vancouver. There was a discovery on Captain Cook's second uh, voyage. Uh, there was one that went to the Antarctic with uh, Shackleton. Uh, there's a rich legacy of, uh, of history inherent in the name Discovery. And uh, to be able to uh, take the final flight of this discovery is just an incredible honor and privilege. And uh, boy, I think we've really set the bar high for the next vessel to bear that name. And, and I just hope it goes a lot further and does even more wonderful things. Thanks. Eric Bo here. I think the thing that uh, it will really strike home to me when we actually do the walk around when we land, because uh, obviously we're concentrating at the mission at hand. Occasionally we think about the, the legacy that Discovery has. But I think for me, after we do the walk around, and as Nicole said, a tear is going to come to the eye. And the big word that I could describe it is with pride. I mean, it's people that make the ship. All the ships we've had, as Mike was saying, with, with Discovery, we've had a, leg, a, li a line of ships named Discovery, but it's the people behind those ships that made the difference. And just like that, it's the people that make Discovery, the space shuttle, such a uh, great machine. Well, thank you, all three of you, really, for taking some time this morning to speak with me. Uh, uh, we uh, wish you all the best. Enjoy that extra day that they gave you at the space station and in space, and, and we'll see you back at the Kennedy Space Center on Tuesday. We are all looking forward to it. See you then. Discovery ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. And thank you to MSNBC, WXIA-TV, and Fox News Radio. Discovery and ISS, we're now resuming operational audio comp.